الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعين به ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تبارك وتعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله تبارك وتعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار نسأل الله العزيز الغفار أن يجيرنا وإياكم من عذاب النار We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we are to be praised We thank you for the ni'ma of Islam Alhamdulillah ala ni'ma of Islam wa kafa biha ni'ma We praise him for the bounty of Islam and he was the only bounty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon us by Allah it will be sufficient we continue inshallah ta'ala in our mini series and hopefully we'll be able to finish it today inshallah ta'ala and it's pertaining to this tremendous month of al-muharram and the day of ashura and that connection between the nations between the umam the connection that all the Muslims throughout history have with each other, the people of At-Tawheed, as SubhanAllah, the day of Ashura is a clear connection between Musa السلام, and his people, the people of monotheism that were with him, and with the followers of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if you remember, we talked a little bit about the uh, situation of Musa السلام, what he went through at the uh, him and his people at the hands of Al-Tahiyya, Fir'aun, the one that claimed divinity. He said, al-A'la, I am your highest Lord. And he said, uh, وقلت لكم أن الزيارة في المبنى زيارة في المعنى ما علمت لكم من إله غيري هذه أقوى من قوله ما علمت لكم إله غيري يعني هذا فيها نفي المطلق هي is a complete negation of any deity besides him and if you remember we talked about the fact that سبحان الله very few characters throughout history of mankind were able and had the audacity to deny the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many have denied his deity, that he is the only one that is worthy of being worshipped, but Fir'aun was one of those few that actually denied the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He denied it to Allah and he gave it to himself. And I mentioned the, to you the story of Al Namrud, the one with, that was with Ibrahim السلام, that had that conversation that is clearly documented in Surah Al Baqarah, that he also gave himself that right to claim the lordship. But subhanAllah, little do they, little do these fools know and understand that lordship requires a lot more than just being a king and being able to. Uh, kill people or spare their lives as that uh, full thought it was but the Lordship requires a lot more things the creation of the heavens and the earth the management of this universe to be able to control the, the sun and the moon and to control every affair of this universe this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do and this is what these uh, so-called gods that uh, self-proclaimed -pro gods would never be able to do. This is the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you remember, I told you that even not even the kuffar, and that's why we 
we should not call them kuffa, we should call them mushrikeen of Quraysh. Did not even claim that. وَلَئِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَيَقُولُنَّ اللَّهِ وَلَئِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَهُمْ لَيَقُولُنَّ اللَّهِ If you were to ask them who created the heavens and the earth, they will say it is Allah. If you were to ask them who created them, they will say Allah. So they had, they did not deny the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but the problem that they had is the oneness of His deity subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they, they claim that they worship Him, but they worship others with Him. So very few uh, were able to do that. But I talked to you also about Fir'aun and the situation with Musa alayhi salam. And if you remember, I stopped in uh, the lessons that we derive, the, some of the lessons that we derive uh, from the story of Musa and Fir'aun. And I will jump right to that. This way, inshallah ta'ala, we'll be able to finish them, inshallah, today. I started as I said last time that the first lesson is الظُّلْمُ سَيُهْزَمْ وَالظُّلْمُ إِلَى زَوَالِ وَالظُّلْمُ لَا يَدُمْ وَصَاحِبُهُ لَا يَدُمْ That oppression will never last and oppression will be defeated. People of oppression will be defeated sooner or later. Doesn't matter how long. Sometimes it will take a long time. Like in the case of Fir'aun, who said that he was the king of Egypt for over 400 years. But at the end of the day, what did he gain from that 400 years? If a lifespan of the son of Adam does not culminate to that person going to a Jannah at the end of the day, doesn't matter if he lived 3,000 years or 10,000 years, it's still, he, just, he still lived in vain. If your lifespan does not lead you to a Jannah, then he was in vain. And this is the case of Fir'aun, because what is 400 years compared to eternity? 400 years off, uh, getting in your way, uh, and then you get eternity in the hellfire? Much good did that do him. It that did not do him any good. It was, it was of no avail to him for you know, what, he, what, he went, what he put people through and what he was doing, the fact that he thought that he was a lord because he was the king of Egypt and he had some rivers or the river was flowing underneath him. But subhanAllah, that's not, that's not a reason enough. So, uh, the uh, oppression will not last. يَقُولُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلُ وَهَذِي أَخِرْ صَفْحَ فِي سُورَةِ أَلِي عِمْرَانِ لَا يَغُرَّنَّكَ تَقَلُّبُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا فِي الْبِلَادِ مَتَاعًا قَلِيلٌ ثُمَّ مَأْوَاهُمْ جَهَنَّمُ وَبِئْسَ الْمِهَادِ الله أكبر سبحان الله عز وجل لخص المسألة في جملة لخص المسألة كلها في جملة واحدة لا دون بفوت by the power and the means that the people of Kufr have in the land and this is how it valid for uh, valid for this, the whole history of mankind. Because in every era, every century, every period, historic period, there are people of Kufr that have means and have power and this and that. But subhanAllah, Allah is saying, is telling you and I, don't be fooled by that. Because it is just mata'u qaleel. It is a small provision. Small means from the, the things of the life of this world. It is a very small piece of the life of this world. Then, subhanAllah, well, uh, I don't want to go into the, the language, it's always, uh, whenever you want to go into the linguistic part of it, it loses its beauty when you have to translate. But subhanAllah, uh, that thumma, uh, always is always used. You have wa and you have tha and you have thumma. Thumma is always like a. It gives you like a little period of time for things that things that will take place. I mean that doesn't matter how long. Huh? It is very small, and then they will get jahannam. Allah Taala puts them in jahannam. What big said we had. Awful it is as a dwelling place. It is the most awful dwelling place. Subhanallah. 
يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ان الله لا يميل للظالم حتى اذا اخذه لم يفلت او حتى اذا اخذه في روايه اخذه اخذ اخذ عزيز مقتدر الله سبحانه وتعالى يملي ما معنى يملي؟ What does it mean يملي؟ He lets it's like you have someone on a rope and you let some of the rope loose you yeah? know when you have a, a dog on a leash and you just yeah, give him a little more leash a little more rope let him roam a little bit let him feel like he's doing something that he's he's got it he's, he's got it under control and then subhanallah when Allah Ta'ala seizes them he seizes them, he seizes them in the most painful way and we saw that with many of the nations of the past قوم عاد وثمود وقوم فرعون يعني رأينا ذلك كثيرا في كتاب الله عز وجل مما ذكر لنا وما أخفى فعنا كان أعظم we saw this the punishment of Allah سبحانه وتعالى seizing many of the nations of the past and those are only the ones that Allah تعالى mentioned in the Quran the ones that Allah didn't mention are probably even more سبحانه so this is a pattern, a sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, giving chances, giving time to the oppressors giving them a chance to, to come back but when, when the decree of Allah ta'ala comes down on them Allah takes them in the most uh, in the most painful way لِذَلِكَ قَالَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَكَذَلِكَ أَخْذُ رَبِّكَ إِذَا أَخْذَ الْقُرَى وَهِيَ الظَّالِمَةِ إِنَّ أَخْذَهُ شَدِيدٌ أَلِيمٌ شَدِيدٌ uh, that way, the, the seizure of, you, of your Lord, when He takes and He seizes the Quran, the villages, while they are oppressors, uh, the way that He does is the most painful way, subhanAllah. Fa, يعني, subhanAllah, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make you and I uh, from the people of oppression, because this lesson is valid for nations and communities and people, households and people. SubhanAllah, it is something that we should always stay away from. Al-Dhulmu, Dhulmatun, Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And the biggest oppression here that Fir'aun fell into is the fact that he claimed, I mean, he did a lot of oppressions, uh, but he claimed uh, lordship, and lordship only belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other issue, if when I mentioned this last, uh, 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 last week, is how how is it possible? How is it? Uh, how can you possibly understand or fathom the fact that someone can actually, subhanAllah, attack uh, and and harm little babies? And that's what Fir'aun was doing. And I told you, if, if you remember, I, mean, I compared Fir'aun, the deeds of Fir'aun to the deeds of a shaitan, and the shaitan came up on top. Huh? The shaitan came up to be better than Fir'aun. Because the shaitan, as Allah, as, as the Prophet ﷺ informed us, that whenever a newborn comes to, he comes out of the womb of his mother, huh? the shaitan comes and he posts that newborn and in a painful way until the newborn starts screaming. Except, remember, except for Isa, Jesus the son of Mary, and his mother, they were exempt. They were exempt from that. Subhanallah. ومسلم كما ذكرت لكم حديث ابي هريره قال صلى الله عليه وسلم كل بني ادم يطعن يطعن الشيطان في جنبيه باصبعه حين يولد غير عيسى بن مريم ذهب يطعنه فطعن الحجاب. That subhanallah uh, all of the newborns that when they're born the shaitan wants to uh, go to he pokes them uh, in a painful way until they start crying except for in this hadith the Jesus the son of Mary the shaitan wanted to, to poke him, but all he was poking is the shield that Allah Ta'ala put around him. Why did Allah Ta'ala put that, that shield around him? Because if you go to page 5 of Ali Imran, you find Allah Ta'ala talking about the story of uh, the wife of Imran, the mother of Maryam, Mary, when she, was, she gave birth to Maryam. قَالَتْ وَإِنِّي من الشيطان الرجيم. I seek refuge in you, O Allah, for her and her offspring from the accursed shaytan. So they were, these were the two that were exempt from the shaytan poking them. And there are many a hadith that talks about this. But imagine, ya ikhwah, 
someone uh, to, to, that gives the order to his soldiers to go with knives, knives in their hands any newborn male that you find literally slaughter him like you slaughter a sheep subhanallah and that's exactly what they did they killed them by by the thousands subhanallah and all of that like i told you and that's where i stopped last week uh, is it the very long hadith of ibn abbas al hadith of al futun if you remember i talked to you about this hadith wa summiya bi hadith al futun لأن الله عز وجل في سورة طه قال قال لي نبيه موسى عليه السلام قال وإذا وحيد إلى أمك ما يوحى أن اخذي فيه في التابوت واخذي فيه في اليم فليلقه اليم بالساحل يأخذ عدو لي وعدو له وألقيت عليك محبة مني ولتصنع على عيني إذ أختك فتقول هل أدلكم على من يكفله فرجعناك إلى أمك كي تقر عينها ولا تحزن وقتلت نفسا فنجيناك من الغم وفتناك فتونا فهذا حديث الفتون يعني هذا في في صياغ الشرح لأن ابن عباس قد دعا له النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنا أرشان السكت فقال ماذا قال تذكرون ماذا قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لابن عباس وكان فتى صغيرا اللهم فقهه في الدين وعلمه التأويل. The Prophet ﷺ made du'a supplication for Ibn Abbas. Said, "Oh Allah, huh? give him understanding in the religion and teach him a tawil. What is a tawil? To have the ability to explain the Quran." By the way, I I open a clause here. Uh, there is a, especially lately, there is a uh, this wave. Uh, or this phenomenon that people now because they went to school a little bit or because they have some education or because they have some command of maybe the Arabic language they think that that gives them the ability and the right to go and open the Quran start reading huh, and explain that the way that they see things and you should yeah, hear the warnings of the scholars of Islam about this because this is dangerous. If Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr, the second after the Prophet Sallallahu the one that witnessed was, was from the first ones that embraced Islam. Six of the ten that were given glad tidings for being from the people of Al Jannah, he, he is the one that, that called them to Islam. They are Muslims because of him. And he was with the Prophet Sallallahu from day one. And every single revelation that was revealed to the Prophet he was right there. And he heard the explanation firsthand from the Prophet Someone came and asked him about something in the Quran. And he said, What land will carry me? And what sky will, will, will uh, uh, shadow me? If, I'm, if I have the audacity to say about Allah that which I don't know, it would happen to be something that he doesn't, he doesn't know. He didn't start it. He, he could have just read it and his command of the Arabic language, that's his language, his native language, not ours. It is his native language that he spoke and he was eloquent. You could have read it and say, you know what? I think this, this is what it's saying. He did not say that. He did not hear the explanation from the Prophet and he stopped. Now we have people that are more than 1400 years ago because they have some knowledge of the Arabic language they see an ayah and say oh yeah, that's what it means have you read the explanation of the Sahaba? have you read the explanation of the Tabirin? and have you read the, the compilation of all of those explanations that the big scholars of Tafsir like Ibn Kathir and Bagawi and others put together in those books nobody should have the audacity of the to go and re open the, the Book of Allah and claim to understand without, without reading the explanation of, of, uh, of the, the scholars of, the, of an Islam because this is dangerous territory. And I told you before in previous lectures, people that, subhanAllah, they say uh, what Allah Ta'ala said in Surah Al-Nisa, the ayah, of course it's always, that's, that's, that's a big favorite, it's a, subject, a favorite subject for a lot of women. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, well, if, uh, uh, if you, you are afraid of a nushuz that the 
uh, women commit nushur, that nushur is when, when a woman uh, is completely disobedient to, to her husband, then Allah Ta'ala gives her the different stages. One of the stages, and the last stage, and we're not gonna, we're not gonna go into the details how it, sh it should take place, Allah says, what? That you should strike them, should punish them. Okay. Uh, I don't have the time to go into how it should be done, and what's the etiquette, and all of that. Now there's this woman, unfortunately, from, from that particular gen generation. She said, no, you know what I think? That means, what Allah says in the Quran, that if you happen to be someone that, and I told you this, this before, you guys, uh, if you happen to be someone that gives her flowers and, and gold and jewelry and diamonds and all of that, you should stop. This is the meaning. Where did you get this? My question is, where did you get this from? I said, well, I don't have a brain. That's the answer. I don't have a brain. So you mean, you think your brain is qualified to read the book of Allah and from? Huh? Some kind of intuition or a hunch or you be able to explain the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? May Allah forgive us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He revealed Al-Wahi, Al-Quran, and He revealed the Sunnah to the Prophet وسلم, to explain to us that Quran. So we have no ambiguity so that everything is clear and explained to us. Incidentally, one of the biggest scholars of Tafsir is Ibn Abbas because of the, this dua of the Prophet وسلم. So in uh, explaining this ayah, that's what he said, that big hadith, because someone came and asked him about this ayah, so he started saying, قال, I'm, and I'm going to bring you some snapshots from this hadith of Ibn Abbas. قال, and ذلك, أن فرعون, رأى فرعون saw a dream. He saw a fire flying from where? The Holy Land, from Palestine, into Egypt. Burn into the ground in every household of the Egyptians and not touching the households of the Israelites. This is after they were uh, they were enslaved. So he went and spoke about uh, spoke about that to his uh, Kahana, his reverends, the people that, uh, that that were in charge, the people of knowledge in his uh, uh, idol worshiping religion, and they said, "This looks like there is someone." Uh, from the Israelites that will come and, and destroy your kingdom. And we actually heard the Israelites talking about uh, that in their books, there's someone that will deliver them. Huh? Someone that will deliver them from, uh, from bondage, from uh, slavery. Incidentally, it just reminds me of something, subhanAllah, just uh, very quickly. Do you know, did I ever tell you, Todd, uh, the, the capital of Florida, Tallahassee. What does the name stand for? <laughs> yes. Because, uh, believe it or not, uh, the, which tribe is the Florida tribe for uh, the Indians? The Seminoles, right? The Seminole tribes, a lot of them embrace Islam. Because Muslims have been coming here for oh, almost a, a thousand years. And the name Tallahassee is as Ta Allah Asi. Actually, it's right there in the, the museum the, in Tallahassee. You can see it. And it means in their, the, the Seminole language, Allah will deliver us. Allah will deliver us. SubhanAllah. So, same thing. They, they were the Israelites were talking about a deliverer, someone that come and deliver them from bondage. So, Fir'aun makes a decision. Huh? This is the word of Ibn Abbas. He said that he gave the order that there is not male child that is born except that he should be slaughtered, and if a female child is born, that she should be spared. ثم قال ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما وقال القبطي مع الكلمة وقال القبطي and subhanAllah, right now people talk about that there's the Muslims and there's the Aqbat in, in Egypt. But the origin of the original Egyptians, they're all Aqbat. And they were before Christianity, they were people of idol worshipping. They were called Al-Qibt. Ibn Abbas said, he said to Al-Qibt, the, the Keptic or the Coptic, انظروا مملوكيكم الذين يعملون خارجا 
فادخلوهم واجعلوا بني اسرائيل يلون يلون تلك الاعمال قذره سبحان شو هذا اللفظ؟ ابن عباس said that the people of Egypt said the, the, for they were told by Pharaoh that your servants that do all of the work outside bring them back inside and then put the Israelites to do all the dirty work that you don't want to do just like that the dirty and the filthy work that you don't want to do فجعل بني إسرائيل في أعمال في في أعمال في أعمال علمانهم وأدخلوا علمان and this is exactly what they did they put the Israelites in the, the, the dirty work outside and they put they took their uh, their own servants uh, uh, inside subhanallah when we hear this ayah uh, uh, it means basically that Fir'aun has exalted himself in the land and he split the people living in it into factions. This is part of it. That's how putting a faction into bondage and servitude and doing all the dirty work, and another faction gets to to benefit uh, from it. ولكن الله عز وجل كما قال الله غالب على أمره ولكن أكثر الناس لا يعلمون. الله تعالى is the one that that overpowers uh, in a way that makes his decree go through. But the most, most people don't, don't, they don't realize that until it's too late. SubhanAllah. So what happens is that the Egyptians started complaining that uh, this is 10, 15 years of doing this every year. Every newborn gets slaughtered. Then all of a sudden the Egyptians are saying, oops, yeah, you know, uh, this is 15 years of no boys. There are no 12, no 13, no 14, no 15 year old boys that can do the work. Pretty soon, the older generation, generation is gonna die. The young are being killed. Who's gonna do our work? We're gonna start having our own kids do it? Or do it ourselves? That's when, that's when SubhanAllah Abbas نذبح أبناءهم فلا فلا يبلغ فلا يبلغ الصغار. They said that subhanallah that these people, these the Israelites are being killed too much and pretty soon not going to have any, anybody to do our work. Huh? That's why he decided to kill them one year, spare them another year subhanallah. Well, I mean, this brings us to our second lesson for, for the night the power of Allah and that overpowers anything and everything Harun was born in the year and subhanAllah look at that Musa and Harun both prophets but one is a prophet and a messenger and he's the one in charge Musa was the one in charge but he's younger than than how another indication it's not about age it's about the knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you how was born in the year in the year that they were sparing the male boys and Musa Allah ta'ala demonstrating his power clearly Musa was born in the year that all the males were being slaughtered Okay, there it, there it is. There he is. Okay, do something about it. It's a challenge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to this person that's claiming divinity. Huh? SubhanAllah. And to teach us the importance of relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tawakkul ala Allah azza wa jal. Lidhalika, subhanAllah. Awha Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala li ummi Musa. An turli'ahu wa taj'alahu fi liyam. Allah ta'ala inspired the mother of Musa that she should just nurse him, put him in the river and don't worry about the rest. I'll take care of it, subhanAllah. And he made it so, as I mentioned in the Khutbah uh, Jum'ah, last Jum'ah, he made it so, it's a, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling Fir'aun, you know that child that you're looking for to slaughter? I will bring him all the way to your palace and you won't be able to touch him. 
And even more than that, you will raise him for me, you will feed him, you will clothe him, and you will live luxury life in the palace huh? until he grows up. Huh? Then I'll take him back and make him a prophet, make him a prophet and a messenger. Subhanallah. لذلك كما قلت لكم لا أدري يعني I don't know if I told you this last week قال قال بعضهم اسمعوا هذه موسى الذي رباه فرعون كان مؤمنا وموسى الذي رباه جبريل كان كافر يلا هذا لوس من he said that Moses the one that was raised by فرعون was a believer but Moses that was the one that was raised by Jibreel was a disbeliever. Hmm? Maybe Tal will enlighten us on that. <laughs> uh, basing yourself on the, the scriptures that you learned in the past. Okay. The key to the, this riddle is very simple. When the Israelites found out that uh, Pharaoh was going to slaughter all the males, a lot of them took their newborn children and took them out of the city in the caves, in the mountains and just left them there. They said, I'll just leave them there. It's better for them that they're, that they're, uh, they're slaughtered. Okay? So what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to send Jibreel to feed these kids. One of those kids was a Samiri. His first name is Musa. Musa Samiri. Do you know who Samiri is? Do you remember? Samiri is the one that made the calf for Bani Israel after they were saved from Egypt. And he ordered, he told them to worship it. That's a Samiri. So his name is Musa. The other name is Musa. So Musa that was raised by Fir'aun turned out to be a believer and a prophet. And the other Musa that was raised basically, fed by Jibreel alayhi salam, turned out to be a disbeliever. And this is what Allah goes to show you. When, you. when it comes to your own kids, Ya Ikhwan, do your due diligence when it comes to raising them, taking care of them, doing the proper things. But do not forget that the most important ingredient that you always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make them from the salihin. Because the heart, كَمَا قَالَ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ إِنَّ قُلُوبَ بَنِي آدَمَ بين أصبعين من أصابع الرحمن جل وعلا كقلب رجل واحد يقلبها كيف يشاء. Verily, the hearts of the sons of Adam are between two of the fingers of Allah subhanahu wa taala, just like the heart of one person. He turns them as he wills. لذلك قال كان صلى الله عليه وسلم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلبي على دينك. Oh, the one who turns the heart, hold my heart steadfast on your religion, subhanAllah. And if the Prophet used to say that, what should we say? Ya muqallib al-qulub, tabbit qulubana ala deen. Oh, the one who turns the hearts, hold our hearts steadfast on your religion. So, the wife of Fir'aun uh, saw Musa and loved him on the spot. That's why Allah Ta'ala says, وَأَلْقَيْتُ عَلَيْكَ مَحَبَّةً مِنِّي I made, I made Subhanahu Ta'ala give you, I put the love for you in the heart of everyone. Anyone that sees Musa, loves him right away. Unless that person is as corrupt as Fir'aun SubhanAllah. I heard one of the uh, people of knowledge that talking about this subject and he happens to be from Egypt and he says well of course you have to understand this is an Egyptian woman so <laughs> she's gonna make sure that Fir'aun does what she wants huh? Egyptian women are known to be very strong a very strong character woman right so she's gonna make in her household she's gonna make things happen Fir'aun this is a constance of the eye for me and for you. Huh? This, I love this child, don't touch him. I'm going to take care of him, I'm going to raise him. He could not say no, but he said, as Ibn Abbas said, said that uh, it is a, a, a source of joy for you, but as for me, no. 
Ibn Abbas said that if he had said yes, Allah Ta'ala would have made him believe. Look at these little decisions, little statements, little things that we do in our lives that can make such a huge difference. And when it comes to the hereafter, if he had to say, yes, uh, yes, I, you know, I accept it. He's a source of joy for me. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala would have guided his, his heart. And I told you that in Ja'afi Isra'iliyat, that in some of the, uh, the, the Atar from the Israelites, and as you know, the Prophet said, do not believe them and do not belie them. When he comes, when he receives something from an Israeli, from the news of Bilu Israel, don't totally believe them, but don't uh, don't belie them. Because you could you could belie them and it could be the truth, or believe them and it could be falsehood. But in one of them, one of the narrations, they it was said that a shaitan was asked, Satan was asked, have you ever loved any of the sons of Adam? He said, yes. He said, who? He said, Musa. Musa. He said, why? He said, because Allah said, because Allah made it so that every, uh, every creation that saw Musa السلام, loved him so, I had, I had no choice, subhanAllah. So, uh, Ibn Abbas goes on to say, when uh, the, uh, the wife of Fir'aun was holding the baby, and uh, she made Fir'aun hold him. And the first thing that he did, you know, the Fir'aun had that little goatee huh, that's strapped with these little things, huh, goatee going down. You've seen the pictures. Huh? He took that, Musa, and he ripped it. <laughs> he ripped it from his face. So the Fir'aun starts screaming, Alayya did the Where are the Where are the ones that slaughter? I need to I need this kid to this kid taken care of right now. So she, she said, no, he's just a child. And she, uh, she convinced Fir'aun not to kill him. But subhanAllah, yani al this is a natural disposition of Musa. He saw someone that's claimed divinity and heard him, and heard him from, from day one, subhanAllah. So, ya uh, uh, the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the fact that Allah ta'ala drove Musa to the doorstep of this very enemy, the one that was seeking to kill him, and he made sure that this same person raised him, subhanAllah. Hadi qudratullahi tabaraka wa ta'ala. That's the third, the, the third lesson, at tafkeen fi al-ard, kayfa yakun? The empowerment in the land. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? This is the same surah, surah al-qasas, ayah khamsa wa sitta. Qala subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَنُرِيدُ أَنَّ مُنَّ عَلَى الَّذِينَ اسْتُضْعِفُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَنَجْعَلَهُمْ أَئِمَّةً وَنَجْعَلَهُمُ الْوَارِثِينَ وَنُمَكِّنَ لَهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَنُرِيَ فِرْعَوْنَ وَنُرِيَ فِرْعَوْنَ وَهَامَانَ وَجُنُودَهُمَا مِنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَحْذَرُونَ Allah said, Ta'ala said, wa nuridu an namunna ala al-ladhina sutaifu. Namun. We want to bestow our bounty upon the ones that were enslaved and overpowered in the land. Wa naj'alahum a'immatan wa naj'alahum al-waritan. And we put, make, put them in charge, make them leaders, and make them the ones that inherit these lands. Wa numakkina lahum fil al And we empower them in the land. This is the point in this particular lesson. We empower, we want to empower them in the land and show Fir'aun and Haman. And you know who is Haman? Haman is not, unfortunately, not mentioned in the scriptures. It's not, you will not find Haman mentioned in the Bible or in the Torah. Well, he was an intricate uh, part of the story. He was a right-hand man, al wazir of, of Fir'aun. And he was part of the majority of the decisions. And subhanAllah, and it, when I saw these research, this research that was done, extensive research, research, and it was found that basically Haman was a title in Egypt, just like Fir'aun. Fir'aun is the title of the king of Egypt. Back then, Haman is the title of the prime minister, let's say. The, the second man in charge, like the vice president here. That's the title, Haman, subhanAllah. So, Allah Ta'ala wanted to show Fir'aun and Haman and their 
soldiers, their entourage huh? from, from Musa with that which they did not anticipate, that, or that which they were afraid of, let's say. That which they were afraid of, subhanAllah. This ayah, if you read the Surah Al-Qasas, ذكرت يعني يعني ثم قال الله عز وجل بعدها يعني هذه الآية this آية when it was mentioned the آية that comes right after that right after this this uh, آية that Allah Taala that uh, that Fir'aun uh, split in uh, the people of the land into factions and he enslaved some of them and he killed their uh, their newborn males and all of that ثم قال الله عز وجل and he, he mentioned this ayah, 5 and 6. Then right after that, uh, subhanAllah, the solution, the beginning of the solution. We want to empower these people that were enslaved. How do we do it? Number one, right there in the ayah. SubhanAllah. Wallahi, kitabullah, Allahi ajab. When you contemplate, after you are familiar with the explanations of the ulama and you contemplate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is really talking about, you really, subhanAllah, and you stand in amazement. Allah ta'ala says, we want to empower these people. Okay, how do we do it? Listen, number one. We, uh, we reveal to the mother of Musa that you should nurse him. What does that mean? هذا يعني أنكم إذا أردتم التمكين في الأرض فلن يكون ذلك على التوي واللحظة. If you want to be empowered in the land, it's not going to happen right away. You have to start working for it, and it's going to happen maybe 30, 40, 50 years from now. So how do you start? وأوحينا إلى أبي موسى أن أرضعه. We revealed to the mother of Musa that you nurse him. What does that mean? These kids that you have, take care of them, nurture them, raise them. SubhanAllah, because they are the ones that will be leading the charge of empowerment in the future. Don't think that, because time is something that Allah Ta'ala created for us to be contained. But does Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, does time affect Him? Time is a creation of Allah to start with. Huh? But Allah Ta'ala gave us a measure just so we know. They say that, He said that, a day with Allah is that a thousand years for you? So what is, what is 40 or 50 years or 60 years in history? Nothing. You want to be empowered? And subhanAllah, the kids, start with them. Teach them. Get them away from al fitan And protect them. If I'm showing you, you are afraid for him, for his life? This is how you protect him. Put him in the... the what do you call it? The ark? Throw him in the river. Don't worry about the rest. Meaning that, what is that? That if you want to protect your kids, don't do it that you do it the way that you see fit. No. Do it the way that Allah shows you. Because that's the way that's gonna work. Your own way that you come, you come up with, with, from, with your own brain, it's not gonna work. Do it the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches you. Protect them, you know, nurture them, raise them. This in Hadal Manhaj, Hadal Manhaj al Ilahi, the divine methodology of doing. Uh, one, two, three, four. Allah has given a methodology with every prophet, and He has given us a clear methodology with Prophet Muhammad. Manhaj al Rabbani. And now, so that we can relate to the story, to, to this, yeah, subhanAllah, if you try, and many people try, and many people are still trying, unfortunately. If you try to raise kids, Muslim kids in this country, exactly the way the people of this country raise their kids. And mind you, I want you to, and you know this about me right, right now, by default, when I'm drawing these comparisons between what Muslims should do and what the non-Muslims should do, I'm not in any way, shape or form being disrespectful, saying that we are better than them, saying that we should treat them a certain way, no. They have their way. We have to be respectful of their way. But our way should be different. Because we are carriers of a message, Risala. And the Prophet is no longer amongst us. In, on whose shoulders does the responsibility fall 
to deliver the message of Allah Ta'ala to people. It's all of us, and then our kids, by extension, right? So, <coughs> that is the way that people in Europe, for example, or people in the US, in general, raise their kids with that work for a Muslim child. Huh? Would that help you make or raise a, a, a Muslim individual, a, a Muslim young person, fit to carry this da'wah? Would that work? Uh, the, the answer is clear. No, it is not. Do you know why? Because the objectives are different. The objectives are different. The goals are different. Our goal is to raise people that will fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that will worship Him, that will deliver the message to other people. For you to have a person like that, it requires a certain training, certain qualities that you have to instill in that person. It's not going to happen by itself. What are the objectives of people in Europe and America today? It's very simple. The objective of their school system and education system is huh, for them to be, to be trained enough to function properly in their society, to be able to work, make a living, huh, pay their bills, all of that. <coughs> what is the ultimate objective? For them to be happy people. So they can achieve, does not say that, the pursuit of happiness, so they can be happy. Which means that as long as they are they have a job, they have paid their bills, they are an upstanding citizen. If taking drugs makes them happy, then that's what they should do. If drinking alcohol, that's what makes them happy, that's what they should do. If falling in fornication with every person that they see, that's what makes them happy, that's what they should do. The pursuit of happiness. Muslims, we are pursuing happiness, but it's a different kind of happiness. Huh? A happiness that lies in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will bring you an even bigger happiness in the hereafter. Objectives are different. When you get in the car and you are driving, huh? you, you, want, you want to drive somebody to some, somewhere. Yes, okay, where to? Let's say you are a taxi or cab driver. Where to? Where to, sir? Uh, just drive. Just drive. What does that mean? There has to be an objective. There has to be a goal. Well, you're a cab driver, let's say. And subhanAllah. The non-Muslim says, I want to go to South St. Pete. The Muslim wants to go to North Clearwater. Can you do both at the same time? You can't. Objectives have to be clear, and you have to go in a straight line to reach those objectives. So that's why it would never work. People that just put their kids in, in public school and they just hope for the best, they are taking a big risk. <coughs> They're taking a big risk. It's like gambling. I will do my best at home, but he spends only an hour or two with you at home. Three max. He spends seven to eight hours at school. You're at a great disadvantage. Huh? How, how do you plan to? It's difficult. And yet, I'm talking to you from experience because being the Imam of this masjid and many others before, people come to me when they have, they have a serious problem with their teenager. Their teenage girl is doing drugs. When their teenage girl is out doing things that are unspeakable, they come to me and say, Shit, help. Say, help? Where were you? That's my first question. Where were you? Where were you? Do you think this is a joke? So, how? The objectives are completely different. So we could not, could not possibly achieve our goal by, by letting that happen, subhanAllah. So, which means that if what, <clears throat> this is a serious matter. To be empowered as Muslims in general, this is where it starts. According to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, يَقُولُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ يَأْيُهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قُوْءَ أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَهْلِيكُمْ نَعْرَى وَقُولُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارُ عَلَيْهَا مَلَائِكُمْ شِدَانُ الْعِلَوْمِ لَا يَعْصُرَ اللَّهَ لَا أَمَرْهُمْ وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُمْرَهُمْ And again, let me say it again, there's a big disclaimer. I am not bashing anyone or saying that 
these people or that people are bad. I'm just saying, telling, talking to you about what works for us as Muslims. Huh? SubhanAllah. That's what works for, that's the mythology that will work for us as Muslims. Oh, Allah Ta'ala says, Oh, you who believe, protect yourselves and your family members, the ones that you're in charge of, from a fire, the fuel of which is rocks and people. On it, appointed on it, are angels, the angels that are in charge of the hellfire. Shidadun Filah. They are stern and strong. And what do they do? They, do ne they will never disobey an order of Allah. And they do as they're told. When the, those, that man is standing on a person to torture that person in the hellfire, these are realities that we have to understand. He will stand and do it non-stop because he will not get tired he does not need to take a break he does not need to go to the bathroom he does not need to go eat none of that he's there as long as Allah is, as long as the, the order of Allah stands he's standing there doing that's what Allah Ta'ala is that this is a reality that we will face well, when it's too late that Allah Ta'ala is telling us about right now be careful huh? be careful with yourself and be careful with the ones that that you are in charge of because Allah Ta'ala will ask you قُلُ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ مَا مِنْ رَجُلِ اسْتَرْعَاهُ اللَّهُ رَعِيَّةً يَمُوتُ يَوْمَ يَمُوتُ وَهُوَ غَاشُ لِرَعِيَّتِهِ إِلَّا حَرَّمُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ Ya Allah There is not a person that has a trust meaning people that he's in charge of he dies the day that he dies having betrayed that trust except that Allah Ta'ala will make Al-Jannah, Paradise, forbidden for him. If that, that, that does not send the chills down your spine, Wallahi, now we have to look for a heart, we don't have one. These are some serious matters that to be, have to be careful with. And these are, listen, look, these are from the lessons of, that we think of, that we are reminded of every time Ashura comes around and we are we see that connection that we have with the people of the past subhanAllah and you have, you have to understand there is not one nation on the face of the earth in the history of mankind that when they got to a uh, they got to a point of no return when it comes to morality except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them the morality is the, has always been the measure when morality gets completely out of hand, we've seen it with the Romans, we've seen it with SubhanAllah. Morality, there are even people from the Roman Empire, look at their dead documentaries, Allah Ta'ala sent a volcano on them, and they were burned, frozen, solid, while they were in the middle of the transgression of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And the ex excavators got these people out there, they're right there, SubhanAllah. For us, for us to see. When morality gets to a point of no return, that the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes down, and this is a sunnah, sunnah from the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our fourth lesson, subhanAllah, what do, what are Muslims supposed to do in the time of al istidaf Which is now. Look around you. Anyone? <laughs> Look around you. Huh? Burma, Syria. Muslims are being pounded everywhere. This is a, this is a time where, huh? what do we do? These are all lessons that we, we, we can see in the stories of the Israelites. Of the, Israelites. the first thing, a sabr, patience. Look at the Prophet of the Sahaba, 13 years in Mecca, patience. They're being harassed and mistreated and beaten up. Allah Ta'ala is telling them and His Messenger was telling them, be patient and giving them the stories. And these are, this is when these stories came out. Sahaba al look at the ones that came before you. How much they suffered for their religion. Be patient. Be patient. Huh? قال الله عز وجل قال موسى لقومه استعينوا بالله واصبروا إن الأرض لله يورثها من يشاء من عباده 
ولا عاقبة للمتقين. موسى لسه we know not going far away from the story of موسى. Allah Taala said, Musa said to his people, seek help from Allah and be patient, for verily the land belongs to Allah, and He makes allows anyone that He wills to inherit it. And the akhirah, the ending, the good ending art is for al-muttaqin, the pious. Always. Al-Aqibatu li muttaqin. Qala Allah Azza wa Jal. Wa awarna al-qawm al-lazina kanu yusabrafuna mashariq al-arda wa magharibah al-lati kutna barakna fiha. And we, we allowed the ones that were oppressed in the east and the west to inherit the, 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 these lands, subhanAllah. Wa tammat kalimatu rabbika al-husna ala bani israela bima sabaru. And subhanAllah, the decree, the decree and the bounty of your Lord was complete on as a favor to the Israelites because they were patient. SubhanAllah. We destroyed everything that Fir'aun and his people worked for. All of it destroyed, SubhanAllah. Uh, something that we recite every Friday morning. We made from them leaders uh, that, that guide with, with our permission when they were patient and they had certainty in our ayat, in our verses, in our signs. Subhanahu wa the second thing, reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يقول الله عز وجل فما أنا لموسى إلا ذرية من قومه على خوف من فرعون وملئه only a few from the kids uh, in Egypt at first only few of them believed in Musa because they, only because they were afraid of of فرعون and his people uh, سبحان الله <coughs> وإن فرعون لعالم في الأرض وإنه لمن المسرفين فيرلي فرعون has exalted himself in the land and he's from the wrongdoers. وَقَالَ مُوسَى يَا قَوْمِ إِن كُنْتُمْ آمَنْتُمْ بِاللَّهِ فَعَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلُوا إِن كُنْتُمْ مُسْلِمِينَ Ya Allah. Musa said to his people, my people, if you truly believe in Allah, then rely on him. Reliance on Allah. Then he said, إِن كُنْتُمْ مُسْلِمِينَ If you are truly Muslims. So these were the Muslims of the past. People of Tawheed have reliance on Allah. Number three, al istiana uh, Subhanallah. Istainu, gudna sab. Istainu billahi wasfil. That you should seek help and assistance from Allah. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Only you, we, we worship, and all from only you we seek help. Wa hadhi yani al taqdim wa ta'khir. Hadha Subhanallah. Fihi al hasan. والقصر. mean only uh, we only seek uh, help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala number four as-salat prayer therefore this is part of it قال الله عز وجل وأوحينا إلى موسى وأخيه أن تبوأوا لقوم لقومكما بمصر بيوتا واجعلوا بيوتكم قبلة وأقيموا الصلاة وبشر المؤمنين يا الله and the author is there, the information is there. Allah Ta'ala says, we reveal to Musa and his brother, Harun, that you should uh, take, uh, take dwelling places for your people in, in Egypt and turn your homes into a Qibla and establish the Salah and give glad tidings to the true believers. So, a Salah. Number five, a Dua. قال الله عز وجل وقال موسى ربنا إنك آتيت فرعون وملأه زينة وأموالا في الحياة الدنيا ربنا ليضل عن سبيلك ربنا اطمس على أموالهم واشهد على قلوبهم فلا يؤمنوا حتى يروا العذاب الأليم دعاء supplication from موسى عليه السلام said my lord you have given فرعون and his people and his chiefs huh? these all these means, the zina, you give them all of this money.
I mean, the life this world, but they're only using it to mislead and misguide people. My Lord, our Lord, huh? make their yani, yani, make their living so difficult and tight. I mean, put an economic uh, uh, embargo on them. That's what it means. Make their sustenance so difficult for them. Subhanallah. And tighten their hearts so that they only believe when they see the grievous punishment of Allah. Did we see it? Did we see it? Fir'aun, what happened? When the Red Sea was overtaking him, then he said, Amantu. Then, only then, when he saw the punishment, this is a dua. قَدْ أُجِيبَتْ دَعْوَتُكُمَا يَا مُوسَى That Allah Ta'ala said, Yeah, your, your supplication has been accepted. And we saw it in Fir'aun. Huh? And Allah Ta'ala only mentioned Fir'aun, he didn't mention these soldiers. They probably tried to do the same. To say, I believe in the one that the Israelites believe. He tried, but he was too late. And he, was, he saw Al-Adab, the punishment of Allah. He tried to believe, but it's, it was too late. Al-Dars al the fifth one. Al-Aqibatu wal-Ghalabatu li Rasulillahi umani tala'a. This is a rule throughout history, it will never change. That the good ending is for the messengers of Allah and the ones that follow them. Those are the ones that will prevail, sooner or later. يَقُولُ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ إِنَّا لَنْصُرُ رُسُولُنَا رُسُولَنَا وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَيَوْمَ يَقُومُ الْأَشْهَادِ Very, truly, certainly, we will give victory to our messengers and the ones that have believed with them in the life of this world and on the day of reckoning. A rule, subhanAllah. ويقول الله عز وجل حتى إذا استيأس الرسل وظنوا أنهم قد كذبوا جاءهم نصرنا ف فنجي من نشاء ولا يرد بأسنا على القوم المجرمين. Until Allah Ta'ala is up, Allah is I had signs. Until our messengers lost all hope. And they thought that they would be lied completely and disbelieved in. Then our victory came to them. Huh? And only the ones that we want, that we will, would, uh, would have been spared or were spared. And our punishment could never be turned away from the punishment that we inflict on the Muslims, the wrongdoers, could not never be reversed. SubhanAllah. العاقبة يا إخوة العاقبة للمتقين فكونوا مع أهل التقوى سبحان الله كونوا مع أهل التقوى the good ending will always be for the people of piety that doesn't mean that you look down on people that you see them uh, and you see that they're doing wrong things that they, they're transgressors, they're sinners you should have mercy on them Try to help them, bring bring them into the iman, bring them, them into the taqwa. But ya ikhwa, we have to observe a taqwa when it comes to ourselves and our offsprings. If we want, uh, if we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first of all to be merciful with us, if we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give victory to his religion. سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين جزاكم الله خير Okay, very simple. Allah Ta'ala puts you in charge of a trust. Meaning He gave you, for example, may Allah Ta'ala give you some kids, a kid or two or three, and He, by giving them to you, He puts you in charge of them. They are a trust in your household. 
You have to educate them. You have to teach them. You have to make sure that they grow up to be good Muslims. This is the trust. If you fail in that task, you have betrayed that trust. Allah Ta'ala will make Al-Jannah forbidden for, for a person when he does that. Do you understand? You still have that look, the puzzled look. Well, what about towards the, your mother and... Uh... Any responsibility that Allah Ta'ala gives you, but it's a real responsibility that Allah gives you, and you don't do it right, and you betray it, and you cheat it, Allah Ta'ala will hold you accountable for it. This is, this is another hadith. كُلُّكُمْ رَاعِمْ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْقُورًا رَعِيَّتِهِ All of you are رَاعِمْ A shepherd and you are responsible for your flock. Huh? And Allah Ta'ala mentioned Al-Imam. An Imam here means the leader of anything. If you are a leader of another man or two, uh, whether it's a company, whatever it is, and you are the one responsible in charge, uh, then you are, you will be held accountable for it. The woman in her the household of her husband, she's in charge, or uh, his household for his kids, and she will be asked about that trust. Huh? The man is responsible for his kids and his wife, and he will be asked about it. Even a servant in the household of his uh, employer is responsible for the household of where the, the responsibility that he was given, and he will be asked about it. Any kind of responsibility that Allah Ta'ala puts on your shoulder and you deliberately, this is important, not by mistake or not being able to, but deliberately uh, cheat. You don't do your utmost, you don't do your best to, to fulfill that responsibility. Allah Ta'ala will hold a person accountable and he will make a Jannah forbidden for him. Is it clear? Okay. Any other question? Sure. So, we had number one, a soul, patience. Number two, a tawakkul, reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three, al isti'ana, to seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number four, a salah, prayer. And number five, a dua, uh, making make a lot of supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us true followers of the Prophets and the Messengers, especially Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa